All right. All right, Dada, let's get started on Holy Spirit, um, Discovering Holy Spirit, number six. Um, last time, or number five, sorry. This is when things go wrong. Last time we did, um, is it number five? Yes, number five, when things go wrong. Um, last lesson was number four, and that's when we did um, uh, praying for the sick, and we gave a practical advice about how to pray for the sick. So we're going to get started. Um, this lesson is going to be a little shorter, so, and that's um, on purpose that we have enough time to practice praying for sick people and activating the idea of faith. Please pray over your heart before this lesson, Dada. You, anyone who's teaching this needs to be um, aware of the battle in their own heart for faith to rise up to pray for the sick. This is powerful um, in our lives to start doing this. So I'll be praying for you. All right, let's get started. All right, so welcome everyone back to Discovering Holy Spirit course. Um, this is session five. We've been going through this amazing journey um, through the book of Acts about discovering the Holy Spirit um, for the Bible as well as for us today. Um, we started this course out learning about who the Holy Spirit is, that he is God, and that he's for everyone. And now he's we're studying the gifts he gives us um, as he fills us with his power and his presence. The Holy Spirit gives us gifts, and um, one of these gifts that we've been covering is last week we talked about praying for the sick. Um, this can um, be new for a lot of people, so we talked about practical steps, about listening and sharing and all that. And we always want to make sure that we're showing people God's love and care. So before we get started, does anyone have any questions about um, praying for the sick, or did anybody pray for the sick that they'd like to talk about? Okay, awesome. Well, let's get started into lesson um, five. Um, as Christians, it's important that um, with the Holy Spirit, we're always honest. Um, sometimes we can think, I need to be optimistic, and sometimes we think I need to be honest and negative, and we don't know where, where being honest is. Christianity, in our faith, we're able to look directly at the problems and then join what God wants to do. Whether it seems good or bad at the moment, um, it's always the big picture. It's just God will always make it good when we stick with him. His in picture is heaven, um, and that's perfect. That's paradise, and our goal is to always try to reflect that to people. So our job is to stay strong. And when we start praying for sick people, you're gonna, you will more than likely start to experience things going wrong. Um, it's very common, and we want to talk about this and face this with you and not just ignore it. Um, so, and see the big picture of what God's doing. So today's topic is discovering the Holy Spirit when things go wrong. Um, so get ready. This is going to totally relate to where you're at. If you're in this course, you're somebody who has experienced things going wrong, or you don't know, but you're curious about when things go wrong, what do I do? Because I'm nervous. I want to pray for people, but what if they don't get healed? Or what if this doesn't happen? Um, so what are some things you can imagine would happen if you were to pray for a sick person that could go wrong or pray for someone who's sick? What's something that could go wrong? What do you think? Most people will say they don't get healed. You say, yeah, what are some other things? Like what? What if they turn away from God? What if they don't get healed? So what if they don't get healed? What are the negative things that could happen? What's the worst things that could happen? Can you imagine? The point is, of after they share everything, listen to the responses. Yes, these are all bad things. These are all things, some of these things I didn't even think of, because they'll have answers you don't think of. Um, but God is still able to work through these things. The worst it gets for us as Christians is heaven. Our lives go bad, 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 and then we get heaven. So we go, but we get heaven. Um, it's not the worst thing in the world um, to pray for somebody and they don't get better. What's the worst thing in the world is, is to see a sick person and do nothing about it. So what we're going to look at today is, is when things are going bad, what is God calling us to do with the Holy Spirit? When it's not going well, what's happening? Um, this is going to be real life. So if you're somebody who says, I like it when people are um, real and honest, then great. That's going to be us today. 
Um, yes, some people stepping out in the Holy Spirit and praying for sick people, some people are going to think you're different. They're going to think you're strange, maybe. They're going to think you're weird, like my friend Dada. They're going to think that you're crazy, like my friend Sophia. And they're going to think all kinds of different thoughts about you. But no matter what is happening, um, God's job is to heal and save. Your job is to believe and pray. So keep it simple. Just know your job is, is to believe in Jesus and pray for miracles. Pray for these things. It's God's job to heal and to save. So do your job and let God do his job. And that's our calling in this discovering the Holy Spirit and being filled with his presence is we don't always know. Sometimes we're stepping out and we're learning to walk and this is all new for us. And so we need to be aware of that every day. All right. So first thing that could go wrong, we're going to look at the top things that could go wrong. So the first thing that could go wrong is imagine you pray for a sick person. Most people said this, there is nothing happens. You say, hey, can I, hello, my name is Dara. How are you doing today? Oh, it's nice to meet you. Um, I would like to, I noticed you're sick. Um, what's wrong? Oh, that's too bad. Can I pray for you? You listen to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit tells you to pray for the healing. You pray for it. You get done. Hey, on a scale of one to 10, how bad's the pain now? It's, it's a five. Is it worse or better? It's the same. Nothing. You just prayed. You did everything right. You prayed your heart. You felt in it. You're like, yeah, God's going to do it. And nothing happens. This happens sometimes. In fact, it didn't just happen to us. It happened to somebody very famous that we all look up to. Let's read this verse and find out who else this happens to in the Bible. Read Mark 6, 5. They read it. What does this verse say? It says that Jesus couldn't heal everyone because of their faith. Yes. So even Jesus, God, who made everything, couldn't heal every single, didn't heal every single person. It's not that he couldn't, he didn't heal every single person. It's, it's God stopped it. Why? There's all sorts of reasons when there's no healings. Sometimes you don't have the faith. Sometimes they don't have the faith. Sometimes it's not the timing God has. It, you, we just don't always know the reasons why. But what we do know is, is when we don't experience the answers we're wanting, that's when we get an opportunity to live by faith. Now, this is a time where you can share a personal story data. But if you don't have a personal story, you're welcome to use mine. Um, my story is, is when I was in um, Cambodia, there was a teenage girl who prayed for a deaf girl. Um, and she prayed with all of her heart and cried and cried and cried. And for hours, she prayed for this girl that was deaf. She was a poor girl named Paula. And when she got done praying, she asked, Paula, how do you feel? And guess what happened? Nothing. Paula was still deaf. Kayla went back to America, never really knowing what was happening and all those things. Um, but the next month, I went back to the place where, this, um, where, where Paula, the deaf girl, lived in Phnom Penh. And I, I visited her and I asked her how she was doing. And all she could go on was is how much love she felt from this girl from America. And how it was amazing that some girl from far away would care about her and that God would put that on her heart. And she openly gave her life to Jesus. Um, Kayla, the girl from America, didn't know any about anything about this. She didn't know that her prayer made any difference. She didn't know Paula gave her life to Jesus. All those things never affected her. But Kayla, instead of going into doubt, saying, God doesn't want to heal anyone, Kayla's faith got even more challenging. She said, I will pray for more people. I will pray for every deaf person I can find until someone gets healed, because I will live by faith. What happens when there is no healing is God gives you the chance to live by faith and not by sight. This is a powerful moment in a Christian faith, and it's the first thing we want to hit is you will start praying for sick people and you might see people not healed. That is not a time to stop and reflect. This is a time to push forward even harder, learning 
in your heart and your spiritual muscle like oh when i talk for healing it sounds like this i want to sound more like this or i'm getting more angry at sickness and i want to speak like this and you're going to start working this out so face no healing knowing this is my chance to live by faith and not by what i see again your job is to pray and believe it's god's job to save and heal when jesus didn't see healings did he stop? No. He kept going and healing more and more people all around him. So should you stop? No. You should keep going on and on and on. Um, also, it's important to know that each time we stop to pray, um, it, it's this is a command that God's given us. Um, it's not just an option. He wants us to know that we are called into this. Another thing to know is that there are times in your faith where um, something else will go wrong. First is, is when things go wrong, there's no healing sometimes. Another thing when things go wrong is you'll see somebody, maybe they get partially healed. So this is the scenario. Uh, you go up to a person, you say, hey, I noticed that your arm is is in pain. My name's Dada. What's your name? Oh, nice name. Hey, how bad is the pain? One out of ten. Oh, it's out of five. Okay. Can I pray for this? And they say, Yeah, you can pray for my pain. And you pray. You say Amen. And then you get done praying. You say, Honestly, is this pain the same, better, or worse? And they feel and they say, Yeah, it's a little better. It's Instead of a five, it's a four, maybe three. The pain's gone down like a point. What do you do? This is an opportunity when you see a partial healing, you get to try again. We should never stop when we're, when we're doing this. Um, there's, again, another story of this happening to Jesus. Check this out. Read the verse, blah, blah, blah. What happened here? The man's eyes... Were partially healed so he spit in the thing and he prayed again and then he got fully and he could see it. people didn't look like trees anymore what's the point of the story is that when jesus saw the miracle happening he didn't just stop he kept continuing going and trying again sometimes healings will happen in waves sometimes what happens is you'll start to pray and you'll feel you won't even see a healing start to happen maybe you just feel like a warmth in your hands or you'll start to feel something in your in the holy spirit or they're feeling something so sometimes i ask not how do you feel how's the pain i'll sometimes ask are you feeling god do anything what's god doing right now and they'll tell me i'm not feeling the pain go away because that's not what they need to focus on they need to focus on the holy spirit and sometimes they'll say things like wow, i feel a lot of peace all of a sudden this is a time to go deeper into that prayer and say okay we're getting somewhere something's happening Let's stop, double check where we're at, and keep going, and keep praying. Um, if God's not finished, then you're not finished. And God's never done until we get to heaven, so guess what? We are never done. We just keep going for it. We don't want to stop. Um, this is a time for endurance. The key word here is endurance. It's kind of like this. Imagine you're an athlete, and you're running a race. I have a friend who ran uh, the marathon um, a couple weeks ago, and he said, I was so proud of myself, I ran the whole thing. But, you know, when you see a partial healing, it's kind of like stepping out in faith, it's kind of like running this race. You see a sick person, and that's the starting line. You say, I'm going to go pray for him, and that's the gun shooting, go. And then you start walking up to him, and you ask him to pray, and do all that stuff, and then they get partially healed, and you're coming to the finish line, and you stop and you say, oh, they got partially healed. Okay, we're done now. I don't need to finish this race. And you're right in front of the line and you just stop. I mean, imagine an athlete that runs this race and runs so hard the entire time. And he stops like 10 kilometers or 10 centimeters in front of the whatever. I don't know meters very well. Stops three meters in front of the line and decides, ah, I'm tired. I don't want to run this race anymore. That'd be ridiculous. It's the same way when we quit, when we see people getting better, and we refuse or stop in praying, and we say, okay, that's good enough. Now, 
it's happened to me just even last week where um, I had a friend and she was sick and I prayed for her and she got better. She got twice the pain went from an eight to a four. But then we prayed again and it stayed a four. You know what happens then? I go back to, okay, no healing. I'm living by faith. I prayed again. Nothing happened. I'm not feeling my heart to keep trying. So God, I give this one to you. We're just going to praise you. The system that I recommend is when someone is partially healed, take time first to thank God for the partial healing. I mean, it's great he just did a miracle. And refocus your mind. Are you focusing on the right things to pray for this person? And then pray again. More than likely you are because you're hitting something, but keep going for it. Okay? So there is, when things go wrong, no healing, you get a chance to live by faith. Partial healing, you get a chance to try again and have some endurance. Third thing that we want to look at when things go wrong is let's say the person gets better, but then they get sick again the next day. This has happened to so many of my close friends. And it's a very emotional thing, especially when they struggle with, some people have severe migraines um, that make them sick like my wife. Um, other people have other kinds of diseases and infirmities and, and pains in their body. It's good that we attack these things, but we also want to be sensitive to if the sickness comes back again, what do we do? This is a moment where we need to stop and realize the physical body is second to the spiritual body in a person's life. And we need to be sensitive to doubt and discouragement. We don't want Satan to get a stronghold, to get a, a, a grip on their heart with doubt and discouragement or any sort of evil spirit. So instead, when someone's getting sick again, um, we need to realize you get truth over your feelings. It's the time to say, I'm not going to live by my feelings. I'm going to live by the truth that God can heal me if, and nothing is impossible. This is a powerful moment in life to do this. Um, this is a moment when really people define and discover who they are. Um, and it's a time in life where we really learn to focus our eyes and focus our intention on what's most important. And um, this is a verse that defines that Paul writes this, the guy that we're reading about in Acts. This is what he wrote to the Corinthians. Check it out. Read it. What does this verse say? It says to focus our eyes. Yes. Great. Yes. It says to focus our eyes that the unseen things are more important than the seen things because the unseen things are eternal. Your faith is eternal. When someone isn't is getting sick again, then I ask them, okay, you're getting, you're getting sick again. My question for you is, is um, one is, is um, how are you feeling? Where's your hope at? Do you believe all things are possible? Let's pray for your faith before we pray for your body. Um, my encouragement is if you see somebody getting sick again, you first pray for their heart. You pray for their faith. You care about their belief and their hopes and their dreams before their body. Um, and, you, and, you, and you take care of that. Now definitely pray for the body again. But first minister and pray for the heart. Make sure their heart is taken care of. And that they know, hey, getting sick again, this, I mean, even if I got healed, I'm still going to die. You know, until I go to heaven, it's going to be like a roller coaster ride. You know, a roller coaster is um, so much fun, right? Like, uh, have you ever ridden a roller coaster? When you ride it, it goes up and down and up and down. And it's so much fun. Well, um, there's two types of people on roller coasters. There's the people who have so much fun and joy and the people who have fear and they're scared the whole time. And I actually videotaped the faces of these two people. I have this video if you want to use it. And it shows these different people. Some people who are just smiling and they're so happy and some people are afraid. The question I asked, all the, I, I showed this to 100 teenagers and I said um, to all the youth I was speaking to, all the people I was speaking to, I said, who can you tell me? Um, was happy and joyful and they were like oh the people having joy they love the roller coaster and I said my question is this why did the people have joy versus the people have fear what did they believe that was different and they went through different thoughts and they thought about it and they was like 
I don't know. And then one person stood up and they said the most amazing answer that I want to share with you. They said the people that had joy with the roller coaster, they all believed 100% the safety belt would work. The people with fear, they had no belief in the safety belt. And so they felt, they knew at the end of the ride, they, they didn't know what was going to happen. But the people that believed in the safety belt knew at the end of the ride, it would be okay. The safety belt for us in this metaphor is Jesus. He, As long as we know he has us, then the ride of sicknesses and not getting getting sick again and, and getting healthy again and, and this roller coaster ride of getting better and getting worse turns more into a temporary ride where we're going up and down. And it's just kind of funny sometimes. My friend Dada, one of the things that I think is great about him is, is when bad things are happening, he starts laughing and smiling even more and more and more. And I admire him because of his faith, because he knows Jesus is holding him no matter what. <coughs> That's you, bud. All right. <coughs> Sorry. Last thing. Um, last thing we're going to talk, or sorry, not last thing, um, last two things. Or no, yes, last thing. Last thing we're going to share is um, when things go wrong, people, when you pray for a sick person and you ask them, hey, can I pray for you? This will be the hardest thing. And this does happen, especially with some of your friends or people who are discouraged. You'll say, you'll, you'll feel the Holy Spirit saying, try praying for this person. You're like, okay, I'm going to try, I'm going to try. And then you work up the courage to do it. And then the person looks at you and says, I don't want you to pray for me. I don't believe in you. I don't believe in your God. You prayed for me before. Nothing happened. Nothing's going to happen again. I don't want any of this. When people reject you, you, then you know you're on the right track. And there's a verse that actually says this. When you, How can you know you're, I mean, how can you know it well, if you're on the right track with God? Well, here's how you know you're doing the right thing. Read this verse. What does this verse say about doing the right thing? Living a godly life. That's right. You'll receive persecution. When people reject you, you get to strengthen your identity in Christ. You're no longer going to be um, the person when they reject you that says, oh man, should I be a Christian? Should I not be a Christian? You know, or should I believe in God like this or like this? Instead, you get strengthened, the pressure around you. You choose to stay true to who you are in Christ and your identity, and it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, who in here would, loves diamonds? Anyone love diamonds? We Pretty much everyone does. But do you know what a diamond was made out of? If you can get a piece of coal, I would, I would have one now. So we'll save this as a piece of coal. Um, no, it's too big. I'll say this is a piece of coal. Okay, just an example. This is a piece of coal. Um, it um, is it, this is actually a diamond before thousands and millions of years of pressure applied to it and heat. See, a diamond when it starts, it starts as a piece of carbon coal, and then over time it goes into the ground. And receives pressure and heat for millions of years and then from that pressure and that heat the same elements turn it into a diamond it goes from one of the most fragile brittle pieces to one of the strongest invincible pieces on the planet you as a christian have an opportunity when people reject you to take in that to take on that pressure Turn to your identity in Christ and get stronger and stronger in who you are and what you believe. Persecution <coughs> is sometimes one of the hardest things we will ever face in this history of our lives. God created us not to, um, not to endure and not to just put up with persecution um, and to see it and say nothing about it but to hold tight to him and to continue to pray. If someone says, you know what? I don't believe in your God and I don't want to pray for you. You know what I do? I pray anyways 
but I just don't, I'm not annoying about it and say, oh yeah, I just pray in my heart. Okay, you know what? God bless you. I snuck it. I, I, I do what I can because I believe my prayer is going to do something. There's actually lots of persecution happening around the world. And people get stronger and stronger through this persecution. Um, there's people that are having dreams and visions in other countries that we'll share about later. But just know that for now, persecution makes you stronger when you grab a hold of Jesus. Not when you get, so don't think like, oh, people are being bad to me. I'm getting better as a Christian. No, that's not the point. The point is, is you're trying to do the right thing for God. People reject you. And instead of being jealous or angry towards them, you forgive them. You grab a hold of your identity in Christ and you pray for them and love them without them ever knowing it. This is called unconditional love. And this is what Christ calls us to. And so you do this and you grow stronger. You, the next time you speak about healing, you'll feel that authority in your heart of, yeah, I know how to do this once you've done it. You can speak with certain authority for people who have been persecuted. They, they can say the exact same thing as somebody who has not been persecuted, but there's a certain spiritual authority you have once you've endured these pressures. And this is what we call um, iron sharpens iron or, or, you know, refining us. This is you becoming a diamond in your relationship with God, your faith growing like a diamond. So shine like a diamond. Um, and this is the story that happened in the book of Acts. This is um, the most incredible moment. Um, so, so far in our story from this book, we've gone to the place where Jesus died on a cross, rose from the dead, came back, shared um, to a bunch of people for 40 days. And then um, he went to heaven, told them to go and wait for the Holy Spirit. They waited. Then the Holy Spirit came. Everyone spoke in tongues. Peter prophesied. Thousands of people got saved. Now they're healing people normally. And the church is growing. Right? Things are going good. Everyone's happy. But then this happens. A Christian named Stephen was one of the followers. He was one of the Christians. He was just one of the guys. He was just like Sophia or whoever you want to say. He was just a normal guy that everybody loved and liked and was full of the Holy Spirit. And um, some, of the guys, some of the people in the town, they didn't like that he was so bold and praying for people and, and doing signs and wonders. They took him aside. They put him in front of the city council, the village council. They said, hey, you have to stop doing this or we will put you in jail. Instead of Stephen being quiet and saying, yeah, just put me in jail, or, okay, I'll stop, he looks at them and says, no. And he gives them an amazing message from his heart about needing to have Jesus. But instead of them, you know, giving their lives to Jesus, guess what goes wrong? They kill him. <coughs> He's one of the first Christians um, since Jesus went to heaven, that we know of, that died for the faith in Christ. Some guy named Stephen, this is the only time he's really mentioned in the Bible. This one moment, he was a regular Christian, prayed for the sick. Not even one of his miracles is mentioned, just that he did some signs and wonders. He stood up, gave this amazing message. It's about two paragraphs long from in Acts 6 and 7. You can read it. And then, and then, they take stones and they start killing him. Right there, Stephen's dying. This is the worst going wrong. But in the moment of his death, he looks up and he sees heaven. This diamond of faith says, these stones can't hurt the unbreakable strength I have in who I am in Christ. And his body is temporary. As he dies, he's gone to a better place. And the moment this happens, you think, okay, you know, you think if someone was killed here at ICF because of their faith, the church would be devastated. And it would. Maybe we'd even quit coming to this church. 
that this was the first time that the met ever all the Christians were happy at this point. They were thousands of people all in one place. Like, yeah, let's just have a big celebration all the time. When this happened, all the Christians went all around the world. This was bizarre for Jewish people to do because normally the Jews would just want to stay in what they consider to be um, Jerusalem or the, the land of God. But now God's land was inside of them and his name was Jesus. And so they thought, well, if we're getting killed here, let's go other places where we won't get killed, right? So a lot of them started to go. Look at this map. I mean, they went, I mean, they didn't have planes. They walked thousands of miles. A million, I mean, can you imagine? They took boats. It took weeks and months sometimes to get to some of these places. And they went all these places. And guess what happened when they got to the places they were going to? They started to share about Jesus. This was the first spread. This is called, in some circuits, the Great Diaspora, but you don't have to say that. This is the great movement of God. A Christian is killed. One Christian was killed. And the message of Jesus spreads around all of the known world of that day. This was like the largest portion of the world that most people knew. And Jesus' message is spread to the ends of the earth. From one man having a strength in Christ where he was rejected, it spread the gospel all around the world. Can you imagine yourself having that kind of faith? So what do you want to do today? Well, just like this cave plug needs power, so you need to ask Jesus to come into your life. If you're hearing these things today and you're thinking, man, if I pray for somebody and they didn't get healed, they only got partially healed, or they got sick again, or, they, or people reject me. I don't know that I would stay connected with God. I don't know if I have that strength to really just stay plugged in and, and, and keep going for my faith. Then tonight, I want to take time to ask for the leaders here tonight to have time to pray over you. Just go ahead, you can raise your hand. If you say, I would like someone to pray for me to have the strength to pray and to believe in miracles, no matter what goes wrong, no matter how bad it gets. I want to be a Christian. I want to discover the Holy Spirit because discovering the Holy Spirit doesn't come when we learn about it. It comes when we live this way. I can teach, you can come to a thousand classes, but if you never spend one hour or one day or one week of your life, just doing these things. It has no power and there's no connection if you just learn about it. Remember, if you live this life, you stay connected to God. You're filled with the power and his power is inside you. And then you have the ability to practice these things. So then pray with the people. Um, you can say like, if you have a sickness, I'd like to pray for the sickness, things like that. But today's the day to really get serious with God in this course, as well as to pray for the sick in this course and see what happens. It's the last chance. Dada, you're gonna do a great job. Have a good time with it. Again, please, buddy, if you have any questions, let me know. Love you.